Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing the test activities and continuing ahead with 5.1 that is test planning. And today we shall be talking about another important aspect of planning phase that is what is entry and exit criteria. In order to talk about entry and exit criteria, we need to really understand that these are these these are those checklists which basically determine when you can start something and when you can stop something. When I use the word something, certainly I mean it. That means entry and exit criteria are not test related artifacts alone. It can be used for a project, it can be used in development, it can be used in design, it can be used for entire testing process, or it can even be used for test activities or test levels and even test phases like test planning, design, execution, etc. So entry and exit criteria are not limited to those of a particular test level itself. It can be used wherever you think it is important for you to take care of certain you know, specific things like prerequisites and those checks what you really need to perform before you say you are done. Yes, exactly. That's what the definition of entry and exit criteria is. Entry criteria are set of those activities what you must have performed or should have performed before kick starting with any particular phase or test level or maybe even the test process entirely. Now the question is why should I create these checklists? Are they really important? Answer is exactly. It is very important in terms of not forgetting anything before you get started. Because if you forget anything, all the way down the line when you remember about it, you may be having a stopper, blocker, or you may have to hold or probably redo it in terms of wasting your time and money both, right? So as simple as when you're planning for a trip and if you forget something to carry along with you, either you have to come back to pick it up or you may have to buy another at the destination. In both the cases, either you are investing your time, which is precious, and either you're investing your cost, which is buying another one, which will be useless when you come back, right? So exactly with the same motive, we talk about creating an entry and exit criteria just to make sure that everything is fulfilled and we start smoothly without any kind of deviations and blockers on our activities. And same way on the other side, exit criteria is a checklist which contains those measures and those checks which determines you have done what you were supposed to do and you can happily stop now and hand over to the business. So in this particular tutorial, we'll be looking at some of the quick examples to get some insights about, hey, what can I include in entry and exit criteria? But most importantly, please remember, entry and exit criteria are completely driven by the organizations or the project specifications, and it's not something which can be standardized. So please remember, the examples what we are giving you are just for your kind information, but an organization have complete freedom to decide what should be their entry criteria and exit criteria. So let's look at the quick definitions what the syllabus is trying to talk, talk about. That is entry criteria defines the preconditions for undertaking a given activity. If entry criteria are not met, it is likely that the activity will prove to be more difficult, time consuming, costly, and sometimes even riskier. On the other hand, exit criteria determines what must be achieved in order to declare an activity completed. Entry criteria and exit criteria should be defined for each test level and will differ based on their objectives. So that certainly clarifies that what exactly is the definition of entry and exit criteria. Now let's quickly have a look on some of the samples to understand it better. So when it comes to entry criteria, a typical list of entry criteria may be related to like availability of resources. For example, if I talk about the people, the tools, the environments, test data, budget and time. As soon as I have the required resources, I can kickstart that work. As I have the given schedule defined, I can know what exactly is the date to kickstart. Or even if I talk about environment availability, I may get started with the test execution phase. So if you notice, the examples are from different aspects. The levels, the phase, the process, like budget and time is more from the process point of view. And environment is more from a phase point of view like test execution. Similarly, another one is availability of testware, which could be also related to all the phases what we may have or test levels what we conduct, like test basis, testable requirements, user stories, and test cases. Plus to add here, 
the initial quality level of the test object, like if you have to conduct any small tests, you can certainly do them in order to accept the build in order to get started. So yes, conducting smoke or sanity test as a practice certainly determines that it is one of the entry criteria to get started with the process. On the other hand, if I talk about the exit criteria, these are the checklists which contains the items which does the thoroughness measures or those checks which determines the job is done. So the examples include measures of thoroughness, which includes achieving level required level of coverage, like this could be requirement coverage, uh, code coverage, functional coverage, decision coverage, which the business and you have agreed upon. So say, for example, the business said, I want 90% uh, code coverage at least in order to release the product, then it should not be 89. Then you have to do 1% more in order to stop the testing. Also to add further, the number of unresolved defects is one of the important parameters to make sure that the defects which are uh, open uh, should be in the agreed limit. And then defect density, number of failed test cases, how many they should be, what are the threshold defined in the contract and SLAs, you may have to take into account. Talking about the completion criteria, uh, criteria they do include things like planned tests have been executed or not, uh, how many are pending at any point of time, Static testing has been performed. All defects found have been reported. Of course, I cannot make sure that all defects have been resolved because sometimes you do have a tolerance on defects closure, but at least reported. They have to be documented that there are no such defects which are still on a verbal note. And also to talk about the regression tests are automated. So generally, you know that regression tests are getting automated at the end of the project as a deliverable to the business. So again, they have their own aspect. It's not necessary that every single point would make sense to any, any particular project. You may have to still analyze your own project and your activities, your objectives, in order to make sure what should be your precise entry and exit criteria, okay? Also to last, but re reconnect to the dots between the traditional and the agile methodologies. Many people quite often get confused that, okay, what is definition of ready and what is definition of done? It's exactly the same. Entry criteria is called as definition of ready for a sprint when it comes to agile methodology. And when it comes to exit criteria, we call it as definition of done in agile methodology. So entry and exit are just called as DOD and DOR, sorry, DOR and DOD when it comes to agile methodology. And they are specifically for the sprints. Okay, so sprints, when to start, when to stop, I use definition of ready and definition of done. Okay, so that's all to talk about entry and exit criteria. However, in the examination, they can use any other type of examples as well. All you need to judge looking at a point is that will this start, will this help you to start something or is this talking about you have done what you were supposed to do? Okay, so anything which is kind of like predictions is entry criteria. Anything which is talking on actuals is exit criteria. Okay, so that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.